praise the Lord. This is the wretched knucklehead here, Brother Everly Jr. Praise the Lord. If we could turn our Bibles to uh, John chapter 15, and we'll be examining verses 9 to 13. That's John chapter 15, verses 9 to 13. And it reads, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that ye have, ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man may lay down his life for his friends. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, to the admission, to the application, to the distribution of this great word taken from the greatest book that man could ever possess. And that's God's holy Bible, my brothers and sisters. To God be the glory. So um, recorded in the book of John and the, the only uh, gospel that records of this account that happened uh, between Jesus and his disciples in the upper room. You won't find this in um, Matthew, Mark, or Luke, but only in John, where he calls this intimate moment that Jesus is having the night before he's to be betrayed and taken up uh, at the cross. And he's um, laying out some, some powerful truths and some encouragements to his, his disciples uh, about the things to come. And in doing so, he talks about, um, you know, let not your heart be troubled and they tell them about how they're going to receive the Holy Spirit that's going to abide in them forever. And, and just, uh, you know, just speaking words of encouragement to, to things that are going to take place later on. And, and so and there's a point that I believe that has such an impact on the Apostle John that that just wanted to kind of bear um, notice uh, where he says in um, John chapter 15, verse nine, as the father have loved me so have i loved you so now jesus is saying to the, the disciples i've loved you and it had an impact on the apostle john i believe and, and continue in my love if ye keep my commandments ye shall abide in my love as i have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love these things have i spoken unto you that my joy my joy might remain in you so he's saying that you know, the apostles, the disciples, you, you, you know, my joy might remain in you and that your joy may be full. And this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So now Jesus is now telling them at this moment, this intimate moment, that he loves his, uh, he loves his disciples. And, and John take, took this really in. And he says, greater love hath no man than this than a man that laid down his life for his friends. And this is what he was going to do at the cross. Greater love no man than this, hath no man than this. And a man will lay his life for his friends. And this was Jesus. And it, 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 it had such an impressionable impact on the apostle John, where when he's writing this letter, this, this gospel letter, if we look at John chapter 13, verse 23, and it says, now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. John chapter 19, verse 26. And when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. John chapter 20, verse 2. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. We know not where they have laid him. John chapter 21, verse 7. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded up his fish's coat unto him, for he was naked, and he did cast himself into the sea. Now, John chapter 21, verse 20. 
And it says, then Peter, turning about, see if the disciple whom Jesus loved, following, which also leaned on his breast at supper. And he said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Five times we just read in John chapter 13, verse 23, John chapter 19, verse 26, John chapter 20, verse 2, John chapter 21, verse 7, and John chapter 21, verse 20. Five times we see that the apostle John referred to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. He doesn't refer to himself as the, 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 the disciple who loves Jesus. He referred to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And, and, and why is that? Because there is something that is powerful when you know that Jesus loves you. Because, because, they, they, because as, as he mentioned, as I have loved you, and, he, and he's saying that. And, and, you know, and it's probably going through John's head, wow. I mean, these three years when we were fumbling and bumbling and we weren't being faithful and you know, when we were out in the sea and we were crying out and you told us, oh, ye of little faith. And we couldn't cast out the devils. And he said, oh, ye of little faith. And and all through that adventure, all through that three years of dealing with us. And Jesus is saying, as I've loved you. And so, you know, it wasn't about, you know, you, him or the, the disciple loving Jesus is about. Knowing that Jesus loves you and had such an impact where in one of his epistle letters in first John chapter four, verse 10, he says, herein lies love, not that we love God, but that God loved us and gave his son to be a propitiation for our sins. It's about knowing how much God loves you. And the and the impact and how it, it, it could edify you, it could it, it could encourage you, it could empower you, it can enlighten you, and it can equip you for the things to come when you know that God loves you. And so where where, where the, the Apostle John in, in that same epistle letter in First John, where he says, Herein is love made perfect that in the days of judgment, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. And then he goes on to say that there is no fear in love. For perfect love casteth out fear. For fear hath torment. And he that feareth hath not been made perfect in love. And, and this is so powerful. About this love that God has when you recognize this love that God has for you, that 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 he that feareth cannot be made perfect in love. When you hear a message that brings fear, that brings anxiety, that brings worry, that 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 brings stress, that you're not made perfect in love. You, you're not hearing the love that God has for you. And so, you know, and, and, and so that that should be like a red flag when when you're hearing something that just makes you feel uneasy, that doesn't that doesn't cast out fear. But it, and it's instead it brings in fear. It brings in concerns and, and worry and care. Then you're not made perfect in love because, the, you know, there's no fear in love, the, the love that God has for you. And, and, and again, this is the Apostle John writing this this letter, knowing that I'm the disciple whom Jesus loves. And it's not because of you know, him being good. It's because God is good. See, as long as God is good, God's going to love me. If I have to be good to get God to love me, then he'll never love me. You know, the, 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 the apostle Paul um, says something very interesting in Romans chapter 5. And if we could turn there, Romans chapter five, about this love. And, you know, uh, the first time that he mentions love in the, in the book of Romans is in Romans chapter five. And watch what he says. In Romans chapter five, verse five, and he says, and hope maketh not a shame because the love of God, that love that God has for us. Is shed abroad our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. 
For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. I am so glad that it says Christ died for the ungodly. Because if it said Christ died for the godly, that leaves me out. But I'm so glad that it says Christ has died for the ungodly. Then verse 7, it says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet for a venture for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we see that Christ didn't die for us when we were godly, or Christ didn't die for us when we were saints. Christ died for us when we were ungodly, when we were sinners. Because this, this love is not based on, on us. This ba love is based on him. This unconditional, unmerited, unearned, undeserved love. And, and it had such, again, with the Apostle John, the only one to write about this intimate encounter that Jesus had, where Jesus plainly tells his disciple that he loves them. And that disciple, when he was writing his gospel letter, he referred to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And when you know that God loves you, the Bible lets us know there's a, such a, a, a rejuvenating, resuscitating, reviving, purifying, prospering virtue when you know God loves you. And the Apostle Paul mentions that in his uh, epistle in Ephesians chapter 3 if we could turn there Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17 and it says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love this love that God has for you this love that Christ has for you and may be able to comprehend with all the saints the what is the breadth and the length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ the what, what, what the revelation the insight the idea is that the apostle John experienced when when Jesus said in the in the upper room to his disciples when he said that my love I, I love you and, and to know that love to know that Christ loves you which passive knowledge, this is not a, 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 a human love where we will love you if you're good or we, we will stop loving you if you're bad. No, this surpasses knowledge that ye, when watch this, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. The Bible is telling us when we know that God loves us, we will be filled with all the fullness of God. And so, so when we know that God loves us will be filled with all the fullness of God. And then watch this. Verse 20 of Ephesians chapter 3. It says, And now to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly all that we could ask or think of according to the power that work in us. Unto him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. This is saying when we know that God loves us, he could do exceedingly abundantly all that we ever ask or think of when we know God loves us. You know, the first time that love is mentioned in the Bible, it's in the book of Genesis, chapter 22, where, um, as you know, uh, God, Jehovah God, uh, requested that uh, Abraham would offer up his son Isaac as a sacrifice. And it's in uh, Genesis, chapter 22, verse 2. And it says, and he said, take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest. And get thee into a land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. So the first time that the, the word love is mentioned in the Bible, it's the father's love for the son. The second time that the word love is mentioned is in uh, the book of uh, Genesis, uh, chapter 24, where at this point, um, Sarah had died. Uh, the son Isaac is mourning. Abraham re tells his uh, servant to look for a wife for his son Isaac. And 
and, and it says in Isaac, um, Genesis chapter 24, verse 67, and Isaac brought her into his mother's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Now, Isaac is, if you will, in this uh, account, is a type of, if you will, Jesus. And Rebekah, if you will, is the type of a bride, church. So, so when, when we put it all together, the first time that uh, the word love is mentioned, it's the father's love for his son. The second time that love is mentioned in the Bible, it's the son's love for his bride. It's the Jesus love, the picture of Jesus love for his bride. Jesus' love for the church. The first time that love is mentioned, it's the father, God's love for his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who shall believe him should not perish but have everlasting life. When, when God told Abraham, when he said, Abraham, Abraham, and Abraham said, here I am, Lord. Now I know thou uh, fear me that you weren't going to withhold your son, thy only son. And then he, the, 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 the ram was there for a sacrifice, so, which was a picture of you know, Jesus stepping in to be our sacrifice. But it showed that where God told Abraham to stop, but God with his son, his son that he loved because he loved us. He offered his son as a sacrifice. Where he told Abraham to stop, he offered and then in Genesis chapter 24, again, a picture of when Jesus, if you will, Isaac found his Rebecca, found Rebecca, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So this is the love that surpasses all knowledge and that we will be filled with all the fullness of God. You know, in the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul, again, enamored, if you will, about this love. He said in Romans chapter eight, just paraphrasing, he said, he spared not his own son, but deliver us from all. How much will he freely give us all things? And then he says, who shall lay a charge against God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? For is not Christ dead, but raised again and is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for us? It says, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Shall distress? Shall persecution? Shall famine, shall nakedness, shall peril, shall the sword? For it is written, we are killed all the day long and accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, for we be more than conquerors in him who loves us. And then Paul said, for I am fully persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor powers, nor, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor creature shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing shall separate us from the love that Christ has for us because he loves us. He loves us with an everlasting eternal agape love and it's not based on our character it's based on who god is and who his son is god loves you my brothers and sisters receive that love in jesus name jesus loves me this i know cause the bible tells me so little ones to he belong they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, loves me.
Yes, Jesus loves me, loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. God bless, agape love.